Welcome everyone. We're here today to learn about preventing falls. And with me, I have Dr. Ali, and I'm going to ask her to introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Rabia Ali. I work at the Senior Care and Internal Medicine Clinic and I am a geriatric physician. Let's start with the first question. Why are we concerned about preventing falls? We're concerned about preventing falls for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it's the loss of mobility. And what we mean by that is, for example, if you take a bad fall, you end up with a hip fracture, we're in the hospital, we have to have a hip replacement. We're still kind of trying to recover from that. So next thing you know, we end up in a nursing facility trying to recover from the hip injury due to the fall. And again, we may recover from it fully or we may not. So that's what we mean by loss of mobility. And that loss of mobility can lead to the loss of your function, meaning the things you're able to do for yourself. So someone who was independent and living alone, all of a sudden after a pretty bad fall, all of a sudden needs either someone to be with them, may need to go and live in an assisted living facility or possibly even a nursing facility because they're no longer able to take care of themselves. What conditions make some patients more likely to have a fall? That's a really good question. So there are a lot of different factors that could predispose one to fall. So during the Medicare annual wellness visit, which is for patients 65 or older, we screen them for falls. We ask them three questions, which help us to determine who is at higher risk for falls. So those three questions would be, are you, have you had a fall in the past year? Are you afraid of falling? And are you having any difficulty with your balance or with walking? Now, yes to any of those three questions makes it more likely that you're predisposed to having a fall. So it's important that you get screened for that first of all. And then second of all, talking to your primary care doctor because there are different factors that can influence our fall. For example, if someone has a long-standing diabetic and has neuropathy in their feet, they may not be able to feel the floor, so that can predispose to a fall. If someone's got bad eyesight, like macular degeneration or glaucoma, and they have blurry vision, that can make it more likely that they will fall because they can't see where they're going. How would your provider assess your fall risk? There's a variety of ways in which your primary care provider can assess you. First and foremost, like I said, if you're concerned about falls, talk to your primary care provider. There are things in office that your provider can do, such as a timed up and go test, which is basically evaluating your balance and your risk of falling. There's also the chair stand test that your provider can do in office, which based on your age and how many chair stands you're able to do will also evaluate you for fall risk. Your provider can also review medications that might put you at higher risk of falls as well as refer you for physical therapy or for home health evaluation where someone can come into the home and actually point out hazards or areas that might be of concern that could lead to falls. Also, your provider can give you some exercises that you can do at home on your own to help reduce your fall risk. What can you do to prevent falls for yourself or for loved ones? What someone or their family members could do to help them reduce the risk of falls would be kind of going through and doing a home evaluation on your own. What I mean by that is making sure that all the main areas that you walk are clear, so we have a clear pathway to walk through, that we have grab bars in the shower, that we have things within easy reach, meaning we're not having to reach up high for items, we're not having to reach too low, that can predispose us to a fall, but having things kind of at height level, or using things like a grab bar, or using a stool, not a chair, that we're able to stand up on safely to get things down from higher places. Um, for families that are really concerned, especially if you live on your own, I always recommend use of a fall alert system. So that could be a necklace, a watch. Some phones now have fall alert systems on them as well. So it really just kind of depends on patient preference. What should you do if you have a fall? If you have a fall, first of all, stay calm and assess for any injuries because we don't want you to move too fast in case you've injured yourself. If someone is with you, call out for help, call them to come and help you, assess you, and call for uh, medical assistance if needed. If you are by yourself and you have a fall alert system, great, now is the time to use it. Or if you're able to get to a phone and you haven't injured yourself, now is the time to try to get to the phone. If you're not able to do any of those things and not able to call for help, the next best thing would be try to keep yourself comfortable 
by either putting something over you to stay warm or trying to grab onto something that you can lift yourself up onto, again, depending on whether or not you've injured yourself or not. Um, and then it's important, hopefully after this fall, if there is no injuries, follow up with your primary care doctor, let them know your concerns about falling because once you've had a fall, you're at greater risk for another fall. Thank you, Dr. Ali, for answering our questions. And for our viewers, you could read additional information in the notes here with this video.